Hi, I'm Emily Bray. I'm the illustrator of The Last Garden, written by Rachel Ip, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my cut paper collages. So let's get stuck in. In The Last Garden, you'll often see a blackbird keeping Zara company in her garden. So that's who we're going to be collaging today. For this collage, you will need some water and a paintbrush, some water-soluble crayons or coloured pencils, scissors, tape, a glue stick, some printer paper, some painted paper, or coloured paper. So I've started doing the drawings. I usually start with small drawings, working on pose and expressions. I'm not worrying too much about the accuracy compared to a real blackbird. Just trying to aim for consistency within the character's shape and where the eye position is. I think it's also important to add little details such as the notes to show that he's singing and also an eyebrow. Eyebrows are really important to show expression. If he's angry, if he's sad, if he's happy, what seems like a little line can make a really big difference. And then move on to making a rough idea of what I want the finished piece to look like. Blackbirds love rowan trees and love eating their berries, so I thought that might be a good idea. Thumbnail as many ideas as you would like. There's no wrong answers, just follow your gut. Now earlier on I mentioned that you might need some painted paper. Uh, this is how I create my painted textured papers. Starting off with water soluble crayons, um, coloured pencils, marker pens, you can create some really lovely textures. Think of the colours you'd like in your final piece. Uh, think of the movement, so at this point I was thinking of grass. Also, don't be afraid to add other colours. Pink and green work really well together. Here are some examples. Think of the colours you will need and don't be afraid to play around with texture. So I think I'm going to go with the first design that I did. Um, I really love the rowan berries, um, but I think I'll use the expression from the second idea that I did. I think the open eye looks better and he looks much happier. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with the main branch that the blackbird is sitting on. I made this paper by using a wax crayon on its side to create a lovely bark texture. I actually use my drawing as a rough idea of what I'm going to actually do, so I, I don't feel like I need to stick to it completely, I just see what feels right. Another thing to consider is what time of year are you setting your piece in? Is it spring, summer, autumn, winter? I think I'll set this in autumn, it's my favourite time of year. Also, what time of day is it? Is it sunrise, sunset? Is it windy? Is it cold? Is it raining? Is it sunny? All of these considerations will affect how your character should behave and how they are reacting to their environment. As I said before, don't be afraid to choose colours that might not be the natural choice. Um, I'm going for autumn leaves, but some of these have bits of pink on them and other colours which obviously wouldn't be on real leaves. But this is what adds character and personality to your work and most importantly makes it your own. Now it's time to start on the blackbird himself. So now you've got to make sure that your blackbird will fit on your piece of paper that your final work's going to be on. You can do this by making sure you're drawing it out first on the back. I don't normally do this, I like to work freehand. But you do whatever will make it easiest for you. So I'm cutting the main shape of the blackbird now. I'll often make lots of adjustments once I've started. I like to add little details with colours that you might not expect to see, um, it just adds a little more personality. As I'm doing these feathers I'm only sticking them down at one end just so that they'll lift up a little bit and add a 3D element. 
Don't forget you can also add details with your crayons, um, anything you like. So now I'm just deciding what kind of background should the blackbird be on. Uh, I usually use this with some of the papers I've already painted just to get a good idea of colour. I quite like this pink background. I think this will work really well with the colours of the leaves. Speaking of leaves, now I'm going to add some detail. Just using coloured pencils, don't be afraid to use contrasting colours, like I'm using purple uh, and pink in these leaves just to make them stand out. I also like using a hole punch as if the very hungry caterpillar has paid a visit. Just be careful when you're taking little chunks out of the leaves. Make sure you're not taking chunks out of your fingers. Sometimes with the leaves I also like to fold them in half and that makes them lift off the paper a little bit. Now it's time to glue down the background. I know this piece has a few gaps in it, but don't worry, we'll fill those in. These little patches won't be noticeable once you've got the collage on top. And now it's time to decide the final composition. I like to lay everything out first before committing to sticking it all down. As I was putting this together I realised that there wasn't enough contrast between the rowan berries in the background so I'm just adding some darker red berries now. And now it's finally time to stick it all down. I usually take a picture of the final composition first, so if I forget where everything's supposed to go, I can refer back to it. Here's a good tip. If you use rolled up sticky tape, this will help the branch stand up from the background, making it look more 3D and adding depth to your picture. And now time to put the blackbird in place. And once he's glued down, now the collage is complete. Well I really hope you enjoy watching my process and that it's encouraged you to make some collages of your own. Until next time, goodbye!